बच्चों वी डिराइव द इक्वेशन ऑफ एन एलिप्स इन द लास्ट सेशन द इक्वेशन इज एक्स स्क्वायर अपॉन ए स्क्वायर वाई स्क्वायर अपॉन बी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू वन वेयर बी स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू ए स्क्वायर इंटू वन माइनस ई स्क्वायर नाउ इन दिस सेशन वी विल डिराइव you know more fundamental results on ellipse for instance you know the latest rectum is something very important latest rectum is called of an ellipse which is perpendicular to the major axis and pa passing through the focus so this is the focus this is the center of the ellipse these are the vertices so the half latest rectum comes when we put x is equal to ae in the equation of the ellipse so when x is equal to ae in the equation of the ellipse we will get e square plus y square upon b square is equal to 1 so y is equal to b under root 1 minus e square but root 1 minus e square from here is b by a so it is b square by a so the total length of the latest rectum is 2b square upon a and the extremity of the latest rectum must be taken as a e comma b square by a there could be four such extremities a e comma minus b square by a minus a e comma b square by a and minus a e comma minus b square by a if nothing is specified the extremity of the later latest rectum must be taken as a comma b square by a now how to trace the ellipse and how to justify this figure which we normally do in uh, elementary classes on ellipse let us trace the ellipse now so the equation is x square upon a square plus y square upon b square is equal to 1 only the four points are known to us that ellipse passes through a0 minus a0 0b 0 minus b now first of all when x is greater than a or is smaller than minus a y square will be negative because when x is greater than a or is smaller than minus a this quantity will be more than 1 so when it goes to the other side y square will become negative or y square by b square will be negative so y will be imaginary and similarly when y is greater than b or is smaller than minus b x square will be negative so ellipse is a finite curve it has its limitation can't go beyond a0 beyond minus a comma 0 to the left beyond 0 b and it passes through these four points now for any value of x between minus a and a there are two values of y equal in magnitude opposite in sign so ellipse is symmetrical about x axis so whatever shape is there above the x axis similar shape is there or image shape is there below the x axis and similarly it is symmetrical about y axis in fact both powers of x and y are even so therefore it is symmetrical about both axes now how do we justify that it will come like this this is shows by this is shown by derivative y square is equal to b square into 1 minus x square by a square so y is equal to b by a Root a square minus x square. So dy by dx is b by 2a a square minus x square minus half into minus 2x. So this derivative is less than zero when x is between zero and a, and therefore y continuously decreases and it decreases from value b to zero. So y continuously decreases. Now this portion is justified. Then from when x lies from minus a to zero. y increases from 0 to b and hence this shape is justified and since the down thing is mirror image of the upper thing so the complete 
place of the ellipse is justified. For other things like convexity, concavity, we may resort to calculus technique, but since we are learning coordinate geometry right now, this much trace, I mean, knowing this much about tracing of the ellipse is enough for us. So, uh, this is the trace of the ellipse. Now, position of a point with respect to an ellipse. See, suppose x1, y1 is a point. We can easily show if x1 square upon a square, y1 upon uh, square upon b square is less than 1. The point x1, y1 lies within the ellipse. Otherwise, it lies outside if it is greater than 1. If it is equal to 1, it lies on the ellipse. It can be easily shown. Suppose x1, y1 is a point here. Now, produce the ordinate of x1, y1 to a point x1, y1 dash on the actual ellipse. Now, by figure, y1 dash is bigger than y1. So this will give us y1 dash square is greater than y1 square. y1 dash square upon b square greater than y1 square upon b square. Now adding x1 square upon a square on both sides. So x1 square upon a square y1 dash square upon b square is bigger than x1 square upon a square y1 square upon b square. Now, since x1, y1 dash lies on the ellipse, so this LHS is 1, giving us x1 square upon a square, y1 square upon b square is smaller than 1, whenever the point x1, y1 lies within the ellipse. If the point is here, you, you either produce it to a point in the fourth quadrant, or you can produce to the uh, top branch also. In that case, this inequality is still justified because in that case y1 dash will not only be greater than y1 but will be greater than the absolute value of y1 also. So therefore this squaring is justified so the final result obtained will be same and these, these cases are similarly sorted out. So the position of a point with respect to the ellipse is completely determined. By putting the point in the ellipse, if the result is less than 1, the point lies within the ellipse. And if it is greater than 1, it lies outside the ellipse. Now we will come to a very, very important thing attached to an ellipse, which is the auxiliary circle of an ellipse. So the, the circle... described on major axis as diameter is called auxiliary circle. Of the ellipse, let us see what auxiliary circle is. This is our usual ellipse and this is the major axis. So, this circle is called auxiliary circle of the ellipse and it plays a very dominant role in studying an ellipse. You know, let us describe that very important thing that is attached to or that uh, tells us a link between ellipse and auxiliary circle. Let P be a point on the ellipse, produce the ordinate of P to a point Q on the auxiliary circle. Then the distance OQ will be A, because this distance is a radius of the circle, this will also be A. Suppose this angle is phi, so the X coordinate of both P and Q, X coordinate of both P and Q, is going to be a cos phi. 